Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request we have from Fitzo. Here's one for testing cap. Which aircraft have the quickest slash slowest spooling times from idle to full burn etc? Is a big engine faster or a spool engine slower? Do tell smiley face I think or grinning gritty face or something anyway some sort of face so what we have here valid viewers is all of the jet air I'm assuming it means just the jet aircraft all of the jet aircraft here in DCS about 25 of them and we're going to see which is faster or slower to spool first let's talk about the experiment keep it really simple all of them are just going to be on the ground we're going to put active pause on so they don't go flying anywhere we're just going to go do a count in full throttle see how long it takes them to spool from whatever their idle is about 50 60 percent to the maximum n2 stage speed in terms of percent which will be shown in the game engine display at the bottom of the screen if it's just what i consider the easiest way of empirically measuring the spool times of these engines okay guys let's talk about predictions we can split these into two classes axial flow and centrifugal Flow. Now we've only got one centrifugal engine that I'm aware of, which I think is the Neen modification in the MiG-15 beers. And I know centrifugal flow engines are much slower to spool. I don't actually know why that is. I'm guessing it's just a whopping great impeller disc at the front is a lot of weight. So I think the MiG-15 is probably going to be the slowest. Has anyone got any punch back on that? So all the rest, as far as I'm aware, are axial flow. That's just the superior in every way. And all I can say, guys, I, I don't know, as, as you know, but my theory is just the higher the rotating mass, you know, the more blades, the more steel and the stuff there is in there, the slower it's going to spool. I mean, if we went to car turbochargers, which aren't dissimilar in a way, it's really just a factor of the more metal you've got spinning, the more rotating mass, the, the longer it takes to spool. So I would assume it will be the same here and I'm guessing the higher the bypass ratio of the engine like an A10 with a whopping great fan on the front that would mean a lot more weight so my prediction is going to be probably A10 the worst I think the Pegasus in the AV8B is quite a big engine with quite a big bypass I think Vigan quite a big wide engine so I'm guessing Vigan and in terms of the fastest that would mean something like an F5 would be fastest with the smallest axial flow the less weight uh, I'd say the Harrier probably quite slow at spooling from experience. Maybe it matters how many compressor stages you have, so the engine needs to overcome more air. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, well that's my boys' theories. Let's go do the test and then we'll talk about it. Starting with C101CC. Three, two, one, go. A ten C two three two one go. AGS thirty seven Vigan three two one go. F fifteen C Eagle three two. One, go. F five E Tiger two, three, two, one, go. F eighty six F Saber three two one go L thirty nine ZA three two one go Mirage 2000C, 3, 2, 1, go. F-15C, 
Nick, 15 beers. 3, 2, 1, go. Mig 19P with afterburner. 3, 2, 1, go. Mig 21 Biz. 3, 2, 1, go. SU-25 can't do it with active pause, 3, 2, 1, go. SU-27, 3, 2, 1, go. MiG 29A, 3, 2, 1, go. AB8B, 3, 2, 1, go. F-16C, 3, 2, 1, go. JF-17, 3, 2, 1, go. F-14A, 3, 2, 1, go. F-14B, 3, 2, 1, go. And finally, F-A-18C, 3, 2, 1, go. And here we have the official jet spool times. Here is the amount of seconds it takes to get from idle with the lever pushed fully forward to N2 stage maximum RPM. And the fastest is, and this is weird, but it is the Vigan, the AGS 37 Vigan, 3.28 seconds. The second fastest is the F16C, 4.51 seconds. Then the flanker, then the Jeff, then the C101, the MiG-29, the F14A, the A10C question mark? The F-14B, the F-15C, the SU-25, we're up to over six seconds now, the MiG-21, the F-A-18C, quite slow, which is a little bit weird, then the AV-8B, at seven seconds, the Mirage, 8.36 seconds, the F-5 at 9.25 seconds, the L-39 at 10.21 seconds, the MiG-19 at 10.41 seconds, I guess they're quite, oh, they're axial flow, I think, but they're old, F-86, axial flow, but old, and then the MiG-15 is the slowest by a factor of two there, simply because, again, it's a centrifugal compressor. So, apart from the two different types of engines, my predictions are absolutely, completely the wrong way around, and um, my only, I mean, assuming that DTS has got it right, and it probably has, I just, all I can assume is that the things that go into making a spool time are just much more complicated than we've thought about. There's probably, 
just way over our pay grade. That's the best thing I can think. Looking at those jet spool times, has anyone got any other ideas or closing thoughts on that? What you said originally about the mass of the engine having to overcome like the static inertia would definitely be a factor. And I've noticed on your chart there, the, the planes that have the, the longest spool up times tend to be the older yep. machines. And that would probably be factored in by the technology used to make the actual core of the engine all those years ago mm -hmm. would have been a lot less than they've got now. Now they've got new materials, new manufacturing technologies, uh, which all help to make the whole engine lighter. And thus the rotating assemblies are lighter and more efficient. So starter and the starting process is all going to have less work to do on the rotating assembly as it spools up. One question I've always wanted to ask kind of mechanic, I've never asked it and I've never really seen the relevant time and I don't want to get too much into it now because we're digging into the value viewer's precious time but I always wondered how much the parasitic losses are on these engines. On a car engine you've got not many parasitic losses, you've got a very small generator or alternator, power steer and a couple of other bits but I wonder in these planes you have to generate huge power to power the radar and all stuff like that. I wonder what a parasitic loss in terms of like shaft horsepower would be on some of these engines and whether that has anything to do with small times, generator efficiencies and stuff like that. I think we'd really need to have a really smart guy. To anyone watching, uh, let me know your thoughts because you're a lot you know, cleverer than me. Let me know. I think it's a very good idea in regards to the uh, with newer manufacturing processes. It means for a lot more in terms of like computational design in terms of like like the levels of computation for fluid dynamics, um, especially when you talk about like high levels of air flow, like uh, being able to develop higher efficiency engines um, possibly could result in you know, like less mm. parasitic elements to engines, I guess. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. I hope that was useful for you guys out there and see you later.